Okay, so now we are ready to talk about variable assignments. So if you guys remember, in when we did sentential logic, um, we had this uh, formula were much simpler. We only had uh, connectives, and we didn't have quantifiers, we didn't have variables, we didn't have terms. But still, when we wanted to know whether something was true or false, the first thing we had to do was assign truth values to the variables. But the variables there are represented sentences themselves. So we assign them a truth value, and from that we could assign the truth value for the whole thing. In this case, now, what we need to do, for instance, in the example from the previous video, we, what we need to do is assign a, a value to these three variables, right? If you want to know whether this is true, it's going to depend on what the value of this free variable is. If it's positive in this case, it's going to be true. If it's negative, it's going to be false. So to be able to assign a truth value, we need to assign a value to y. But it's not a truth value that we assign to y. These variables represent elements in our structure. So in this case, we need to assign a real number to y. And in this case, we need to assign an integer to y. And we're going to have that if the integer that we assign is even, it's going to be true. If the integer that we assign is uh, all, it's going to be false. Correct? So now the variable assignments in this case is going to be assigning elements. Okay? So let's do that. So a variable assignment is a function that goes from a set of variables to the domain of our structure. Alright, so essentially we have a structure underneath that we're looking at and we are going to assign values to all the variables uh, that are around. It depends on the formulas that we care about. We only need to assign vali uh, values to the variables that we care about. Um, okay, so we have this, this uh, structure underneath. So let's maybe let's, let's write that in a, in a size. So we have some structure here, M, that we're considering that has some interpretation of a0, a1, F0, g0, g1, h0. And now we want to extend uh, the same as, as we did in, in sentential logic, this uh, variable assignment to an assignment to all terms, okay? So we want an extension S bar that now goes from the set of all terms to M. Okay, so M is again our universe, is our set of elements that we have, that's where we take the elements from. So once we know how to assign the variables, now we should be able to assign all terms. And again, we do it by by recursion. So uh, if you apply S to a variable, you're going to get S back. If you apply S bar to a constant symbol, we are going to get the interpretation of that constant symbol, which is uh, this one right here, right? So up here we have the interpretations for the constant symbols. So if you take the ith constant symbol, we're going to get the i element in our interpretation. And if we have s bar of a more complicated term that now involves a function symbol fi of a bunch of terms t1 up to tk, we, got, we are assuming s bar by recursion, so we can assume we already know the value of this s bar on the smaller terms, and we use that. So essentially, we're going to get the interpretation of the function of this function symbol f1, and that was the g function right right there that's the interpretation of f and now uh, this is a function now it's a function and we can apply it to elements of m and what elements we apply it to we apply it to s s bar of t1 comma s bar of tk so we have k elements and we apply it to them okay what i just did for you guys is i painted red everything that is a symbol okay so to make a clear distinction between symbols that we're going to use these are characters in our computer characters and value, um, values. Let me, this is also a symbol right here, that V. So, okay, so the variable, the C, and this one right here is a term, a string of characters. 
and we are applying this function as bar to this string of characters and the string of character was built using the symbol f and then the string for the symbols ti up to the k and then the way we build it is we apply this g that is the interpretation of the symbol right there to uh, the terms t1 up to uh, to what to the interpretations of these terms that we have before okay so the g is an actual function the gi here is a, an actual function that goes from m to the k to m takes uh, things at k things in m and returns something in uh, m so and this element here belongs to m this one here belongs to m so we have k things that belong to m when we apply g we're gonna get something that belongs to m all right so that's why our function s bar is gonna go output is gonna be m okay so let's look at this example in this example we have uh, a vocabulary tau vocabulary of groups the same as before and we have the structure of the integers with zero and plus and now let's build a term so a term t is going to be the term is going to be uh, let's say x uh, star e star y okay so that's our term uh, i'm going to use red again for the symbols okay so the equal there is not a symbol it's just i'm just saying that both terms are the same thing the symbols here are parentheses x star e parentheses star y those are the symbols and now let's suppose that we are given a variable assignment a variable assignment that on x has to give us an element of a structure the structure here is z c is our structure right here so let's say s of x is 1 and s of y is 3 now again let me change these guys to red so x and y are symbols for variables are variable symbols so they are in red and now we want to figure out what is s bar of this term x star e star y and of course you're gonna you just see it there and it's gonna be uh, 4 but let's let's do the recursion steps let's look at the definition of how to define a star and do it uh, step by step okay so what is this equal to this is equal to uh, s bar of, so the main symbol here is this one up here that's the main symbol that is separating two terms so it's s bar of the thing on the left up, and then s bar of things on the right so here we're gonna have the term uh, x star e and then on the other side we're gonna apply s bar of y and then the operation x star is going to become the interpretation which is plus and plus is black because plus here is not a symbol plus here is a function plus on the integer that's our structure m here these are the interpretations of the symbols our symbols are these two in the vocabulary that i should have painted red those are the symbols and the zero and the plus are the actual elements okay so good and that is equal to um, s bar of x plus s bar of e plus s bar of y right let me bring this up a notch correct uh i just i just developed the x uh star e and now okay the y there is supposed to be red and now uh when we apply s bar to a variable we look at the original uh valuation uh so that's right here that's what we should get there what is e well e is a constant and the constant here is being the constant zero so that is zero plus is plus what we know is plus and then the y is going to number three so that's three 
parentheses are this way, and we get four. So that's how variable assignments uh, work for terms, right? So now if you know how to assign all the variables in a term to elements of M, then M, the structure already tells us how to assign the constants. These are the constants. And the variable, um, these are the constants. And it tells us how to assign the functions. So then we can, given the whole term, we can interpret everything in the term and the term is going to represent an element from M. Good.